My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, multi sitting in PCC Part 1, define and record to partitions, you will learn how to specify a number of memory segments or partitions a camera's RAM, attached Phantom Cine Mag, or Phantom Cine Flash Memory can be evenly divided into. Select a memory segment to capture or record to, and delete a recorded Cine stored in a specific memory segment without deleting image data in any of the other memory segments to free up that memory data and perform another capture. We will cover the various options to save multi Cine segments to an external hard drive in the multi Cine and PCC Part 2 multi Cine Save Options tutorial. For this tutorial, we are going to use the Miro 320S Cam 2 camera, set with a reduced resolution of 1024 by 768, with a sample rate of 3600 frames per second. I'll adjust the exposure time based on the light source I have here. And the last setting I want to specify for this example is the image range and trigger position, so half the memory buffer will record pre-trigger frames and half post-trigger frames. Notice that at this resolution and sample rate we can acquire 10,699 pictures, images, or frames. And it will take just under 5.4 seconds to do that. Now maybe our event only lasts a half a second or at most a second, so we only want to record a couple of seconds around the event to ensure we capture it. Or maybe we want several cines back to back without pausing between them to save them because the events are going to occur rather quickly one after the other and we don't have the time in between the events to save each individual cine. This is where multi cine partitions can come in and help us out. To partition the memory I need to click on the camera setting selector then click on the partitions pull down selection list arrow. As you can see, this camera can have saved as many as 16 partitions. Some Phantom cameras allow 63, while others only allow 4. I'm going to segment this camera into 4 partitions by selecting 4 in the pull down selection list. When the changing partition count will erase all Cine from camera volatile memory, proceed warning message appears. I'll click the OK button. We get this message because we are changing the configuration of the camera's memory and any Cine stored in it must be erased to reconfigure it. In this example, I'm taking the entire memory block and dividing it up into four equally sized partitions. So now there are four partitions available to us, each set with the parameters that we defined to the single Cine before we partition the memory. One of the things I want you to notice is that the Cine Settings Cine field is now enabled and set to Preview. Preview is the live image that we are seeing coming out of the camera right now, but it's a good place to set up the multi Cine parameters we want to record with. Another important thing to note is that the trigger position has changed from recording half the memory buffer with pre trigger frames and half post trigger to adding a delay to the recording. The reason this occurs is because each block of memory is smaller than essentially one-fourth the size it was when I first defined it. So I'll reset the trigger position back to the center. To make sure that any changes I make to any partitions are applied to all other Cine partitions, I need to click the Set All button. So I'll go back to the preview Cine and click the Set All button. When the Copy Cine Preview Parameters over all other Cines in this CAM confirmation window appears, I'll click the OK button. PCC now displays a status window stating Parameters Copy to All Cines. I'll close the window by clicking the OK button. All the Cines have now been assigned the same settings that I can easily verify 
by opening the CINE partitions from the CINE pull-down selection list. As you can see, when I select CINE 1, all the parameters are identical to those set for the preview CINE, including the trigger position. Another thing I want to point out is that the number of images I can record has been reduced, as has the duration. Again, the reason for this is each memory block is essentially a quarter of its size it was originally. Notice CINE 2 is identical to CINE 1. So is CINE 3. and CINE 4. Another option I need to explain is the CINE lock button, which allows us to copy the setting changes from one segment to other empty or non-recorded two segments. What I mean by this is when the CINE lock button is locked, the camera will apply any subsequent changes made in any CINE partition to all non-recorded to empty CINE segments. Since I have not recorded a CINE to any partitions yet, any changes I make to any of the partitions will be applied to all of them once I lock the CINE lock button. To demonstrate this, I'm going to click the CINE lock button, then set the sample rate to 3000 frames per second. As you can see, when I go to CINE partition 2, the sample rate has changed to 3000 frames per second. The same for CINE 3 and CINE 4. So there are a couple ways to program the CINEs. One way was to define the preview CINE partition with the required capture parameters and copy those settings to all the CINE partitions so that they will be identical. And the other way was to select the CINE lock button to apply any changes made to a partition to all non-recorded two or empty CINE segments. Now, let's go back to the preview CINE and talk about how to record the partitions. There are two ways to start the recording process. The first is to click on the capture button. Notice, once the capture button was selected, the CINE field changed to the first empty CINE partition in this case, CINE 1. It also starts recording to the pre-trigger buffer of CINE 1 until a trigger signal is detected by the camera. Another way we can tell the camera is recording to the CINE 1 partition is by looking at the record indicator in the play panel. Just to its right, it indicates the CINE partition number the camera is recording to, in this case, C1 or CINE 1. Let me set this back to the preview CINE before describing the other way to start the recording process by clicking the abort recording button. Before I continue, I'm going to enable the auto black reference feature I described in the Capturing Your First CINE tutorial to ensure the best quality images are recorded into each partition. The other way to place the camera into the recording mode is to select the first available or empty CINE partition from the CINE pull-down selection list, in this case CINE 1. Notice the CINE has started acquiring pre-trigger frames and is waiting for a trigger. With everything set and the camera in the recording mode, all I need to do now is apply a trigger signal to the camera. Phantom cameras can be triggered using the PCC trigger button, a switch closure, a supply TTL, transistor to transistor logic rising edge or falling edge pulse through an attached capture cable, breakout box, or directly through a rear panel BNC connector. The image based auto trigger feature supported by many of the phantom cameras or on some cameras the pressing the on camera control trigger button. All of these options however are camera dependent. For this demonstration I'm going to click the PCC trigger button. When I do the CINE will be saved into the first memory partition, C1, of the camera. Once the CINE has been stored in the camera's partition, it automatically starts recording pre-trigger frames into the next free or empty partition, for this example CINE 2, and waits for the next trigger signal. 
So let's trigger the camera a second time. And like before, once the sitting has been stored in the camera's partition, it automatically starts recording pre-trigger frames into the next free or empty partition and repeats this process until all Cine partitions have been used. Under the Manager tab, notice that Cine 1 and Cine 2 have been recorded into the Miro 320S Cam 2 camera. Or, if I go back to the Live tab and open the Cine pull-down selection list, you can see that Cine Partition 1 and Cine Segment 2 indicate they have a Cine stored in the buffer area while Cine Partitions 3 and 4 are empty. This is what I meant when I said when the Cine Lock button is in the lock position and we change a setting that it will only be applied to Cines that are not yet recorded to or empty. So if I were to change the sample rate again to 2000 frames per second, only the free partitions 3 and 4 would be applied to changes as you can see here. Let's finish recording to the remaining Cine partitions. Notice that I am recording to Cine Partition 4. This is because I selected it to show you the sample rate change in the last step. I'm going to apply a trigger anyway. Notice PCC looks for the first available free memory partition to record into. In this case, it's Cine Partition 3. So I'll trigger the camera so that all the partitions have a Cine stored in them. Now that all the partitions have a Cine stored in them, notice the Cine field has returned to preview. The camera is no longer in the recording mode, and all four Cine partitions have a Cine stored in them. At this point, we can review, edit, and save the Cines, just as we did in the reviewing and editing your first Cine tutorial, and the saving your first Cine tutorial. We will talk more about other ways to save multi-Cine partition files in part 2 of this tutorial. Okay, let's go back to the Live tab and talk about reusing the partitions. The first option is to reuse a single partition. For this example, I'm going to reuse Cine Partition 2. To do this, I simply need to select it, Cine Partition 2, from the Cine pull-down selection list. When the recorded Cine dialog window opens with the message, Cine 2 is recorded, you can modify it. There are three action buttons I can select from. The Delete All Cine button will delete the Cines in all the partitions. The Delete Cine 2 button only removes the Cine in Partition 2 or Cine 2, and naturally the Cancel button stops the process. Since I only want to remove the Cine in Cine Partition 2, I'm going to click the Delete Cine 2 button. Notice when I did this, the camera has gone into the recording mode, recording pre-trigger frames into Cine Partition 2. Before I reuse the Cine Partition, I'm going to delete the Cine in Memory Segment 4, just as I did for Cine 2. Notice the camera has changed the partition it's recording pre-trigger frames into, to Cine Partition 4. And when I open the Cine pull-down selection list, Notice that Cine 2 and Cine 4 partitions are now empty, indicating the Cines they had stored in them are no longer in the camera. And just like before, if I trigger the camera, the Cine will be stored into Cine Segment 4, then start recording to Cine Segment 2. Before I delete the Cines I just recorded, let's take a quick look at one of them, just to see the event captured. As I mentioned a moment ago, I could delete all the Cine stored in the Cine partitions by selecting any Cine partition in the Cine pull-down selection list, then clicking the Delete All Cines button in the Recorded Cine dialog window. However, there is another way to do this. I can delete the file in the Manager tab by right-clicking the Mero 320S Cam 2 camera 
under the cameras group and select the delete all RAM cines in the pop-up window. I could also delete individual files or partitions by highlighting the cine file and click the remove from tree button as we described in the defining the application preferences part 1 tutorial. I'm going to delete all the RAM cine files. When I do, I'll need to confirm the deletion of these files by clicking OK in the Delete All Cine Files from RAM of the selected camera window. Notice the Cines have been removed from the Miro 320S Cam 2 camera. And all the Cine partitions are empty.